ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Clark University as the fourth seeded 15 and six Hopkinton Lady Hillers take on first seeded 21 and 0 Notre Dame Academy out of Worcester. Tom Nappy and Tim Halatic on the call. Mike Tarosian, our cameraman for this evening. And this should be a very good game between two great teams. In the quarterfinal round and first playoff games for these teams, Hopkinton took down Ashland 54 to 47, while Notre Dame Academy took care of Marlboro 69 to 58 was the final score in that one. In the Notre Dame Academy victory over Marlboro, senior point guard Molly Terry went off for a game high 22 points, 15 of which came in the first half. Senior Helen Wickstrom had 13 while freshman Excuse me, well, freshman Ellie Potvin had 11 in the victory. So those are three players you got to look out for on Notre Dame Academy right there. Helen Wickstrom, Ellie Potvin, and of course Molly Terry, who has been sensational all season long for the Notre Dame Academy. For Hopkinton, they're back in the tournament for their fourth time in the last five seasons after finishing short of making the tournament last year. Notre Dame Academy finished 18 and two during the regular season last year, but was upset in the semifinals by 14 and six, Groton Dunstable 59 to 57. And last year, fourth seeded Medfield beat Groton Dunstable in the Central Division II Championship 54 to 33. Medfield then went on to the state championship and lost to Duxbury 53 to 42. So quite an interesting connection with these uh, four teams. And Tim, we got we got to check out a little bit of the uh, game that happened just before this one. Medfield taking down Groton Dunstable. Congratulations to Medfield, they're back in the state championship. Yeah, Medfield really played a great game. I walked in and it was 25-24 Groton Dunstable and they went on a little 5-0 run to, to be up by six. Medfield dominated the rest of the game, scoring 17 unanswered. It ended up making it a double digit victory. Right for the beginning part of that second half, looked like Groton Dunstable was gonna run away with it. And then Medfield kind of turned the tables and they tend to do that quite a bit with the offense that they have. So third seeded Medfield is off to the championship and every single year, it's really these four. It's Hopkinton, it's Groton Dunstable, it's Notre Dame Academy and it's Medfield. Just four very dominant teams in what is a very tough division in basketball. And honestly, again, the TVL well represented here in the postseason. Uh, Hopkinton beat Ashland to get here, and now Hopkinton has a chance to make it an all-TVL final. So the winner of this game will play Saturday at Fitchburg State at 1245 as we get the starting five coming out right now. Let's take a look at those starting five. We'll start off with Notre Dame Academy, and they are going with freshman Elizabeth Potvin. She is a forward and a very good offensive player. And then you got senior Molly Terry. She's the point guard to look out for for Notre Dame Academy. Very good player. Anne Spillane, a junior guard. And then you got Helen Wickstrom, who is a senior guard. And Allison Smiley, a senior forward, rounding out the Notre Dame starting five. Notre Dame Academy out of Worcester, led by head coach Pete Bogren. The Hopkinton Lady Hillers under first year head coach Mike Greco, and it's amazing, Tim. Before we get to the Hopkinton starting five, uh, it's just quite amazing. He picked up right where uh, the former coach left off. Uh, he's done a terrific job with this program, really, to be able to get them this far in just his first season taking over. You can tell that the girls believe in whatever Coach Greco is telling them. They really buy into the system, and that's part of the reason why they're here tonight. All right, well, here's the Hopkinton starting five. Julia Canestrari, she's a junior. Emma Lakasha, a junior. Lily Morningstar, the star freshman who has really come through at big moments for the Hillers this season. Michaela Pucci, a junior. And Ivy Goglin, a sophomore for the Hopkinton Hillers. The usual five out there on the court tonight for the Hillers. And I'll tell you what, I love the versatility on this Hillers team. I know, really, they can beat you in any sort of way. Canastrari can hit the deep shot for you. You have Michaela Pucci and Ivy Goglin working the offensive boards. So even if the three isn't always necessarily there, they can work the offensive glass. And I'm glad you mentioned Lily Morningstar. She has been an absolute revelation this year. Only a freshman, and every time I've seen this team play, she's on the opposing team's best ball handler and usually their best scorer as well. She played a big part of that victory in the first round against Ashland 
Uh, she's, she had 10 points in that game. Julia Canestrari was the team leader with 17, and Michaela Pucci had 13. Now, getting back to Julia Canestrari, she's been a little on and off this season, especially from beyond the perimeter. Do you think tonight that she needs to be on to defeat this good offense at Notre Dame Academy? Well, you mentioned all the star power that Notre Dame has at, at, at its disposal. Only two freshmen, the rest are upperclassmen, juniors and seniors. And obviously they're 21-0 they're for a reason. They are undefeated. They've had a few close games, uh, a couple of wins by three or four points. But obviously this team is to be respected, have not had anything in the L column this year. Well, we are set for tip-off. Ivy Gogolin and Allison Smiley in the center circle. And the opening tip controlled by Notre Dame Academy moving right to left in their white jerseys with the green and yellow numbering a shot from the right side of the perimeter no good from three-point range therefore the rebound Michaela Pucci is coming down the near side is Lakasha passing to the corner to Morningstar and then an errant pass went off the hands of Pucci and out of bounds and actually went off the defender and out of bounds so Hiller's inbound again right away Hiller's trying to work it down low that time to Pucci it was knocked out of bounds but clear to see trying to work the post early here in the game Morningstar gets it to the top as driving in is Pucci and now a turnover, Notre Dame Academy will take it back up. A pass over to the right side. And he'll pass along the perimeter, try to shake up the stiff hillers interior. Driving in, pulls up and launches it. And the first points of the game are on the board from Molly Terry. And she just, that was a pull up jumper there. She saw the open opportunity and took advantage of it. I'm interested to see how both of these teams react to being in a gym like this because the first thing I noticed when I walked in here as Hopkinton turns the ball over was how much louder it was than other gyms. Uh, I, I don't know what Notre Dame's typical home game is like, but Hopkinton's is not nearly this loud. Maybe it's the way the gym is set up, but I'm interested to see if they have the same early game jitters they had against Ashland. Well, the wooden roof I don't think provides the best acoustics. <laughs> As a shot from the right block is denied. Allison Smiley going up and now a long pass. Down court to Morningstar, went off of her hand and out of bounds. And you see the Hillers attacking early, trying to get into that offensive zone quick. They have an aggressive style tonight. We'll look to see if they can enforce that. Like we were saying, the first trip down the floor, they went straight to Pucci down low. Nothing doing on that possession, but it looks like they're going to keep going that way. Pass back to Terry, three ball, and it is going to fall out into the hands of Ivy Gogolin, and the Hillers will take it back down as a pass down the far side to Pucci. And now passes along the perimeter, Morningstar for three. That's off the iron, and a rebound for Allison Smiley. Long pass up court now, attempt to get it to Wickstrom. Stolen away, good turnover as Lakasha was there. Canestrari takes it down right into the lane, turns around, and it is going to be a moving violation, Notre Dame basketball. A lot of quick plays. Seems like both of these teams are hurrying, trying to get the ball down the court as quick as they can. They have four quarters. They don't need to score all their points here right now. Again, maybe some early game nerves working out here for both of these teams. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, this atmosphere, it's a small gymnasium, but it's just very loud mm -hmm. acoustically. I could barely hear myself think to <laughs> pass up top. Spillane for a long three, and that is good. Wasn't quite sure if her foot was on the line there. First it looked like a two, but then she took a step back and launched it. And now we have a travel against the Hillers. Second consecutive travel for this Hopkinson team. And they are going to have to avoid turnovers against this Notre Dame Academy team. They've been known to take control in games early and just not look back. Coming up the far side, Molly Terry now pass along the perimeter to Splane. Splane being guarded by Lakasha and some good defense there by Lakasha. And that is going to force the turnover. And that's what the Hillers need to do. They gotta be aggressive, go for those turnovers, draw those jump ball calls. Pucci on the entry, full court pressure. One up court for Notre Dame, and as they play zone, pass over to the near side of Lakasha. Lakasha surrounded by defenders, back to Morningstar. Morningstar with a right hand dribble coming down the sideline, and an attempt at a bounce pass to the corner, stolen away, but no, it's kept by Gogolin, but then it's turned over again, a wide open break to the bucket, and up with the shot. That is going to be a foul 
as Potvin had a wide open look at the bucket. Quick hands there and she's to the line. Great play by Lakashi to come back, not give up on that play. Hit with the foul, but no easy buckets here at the beginning. No, well, certainly not. It's been a defensive affair so far. We have a ball stuck there in the uh, iron, so the official going to dig it out. <laughs> and it, it might be a small gymnasium here, Tim, but the, the bleachers are very long. You can put mm -hmm. a lot of people in these bleachers. Very good playoff atmosphere as the first free throw is good. A 6 nothing lead for Notre Dame Academy. Not a great start for the Hillers, but again, only down six. Seems like it's more. They're still definitely in this game. There's seven. Yep, very early on, but you don't want to fall too far behind. Full court pressure. Attempted pass to Kanishari. She's able to pick it up after fumbling around and takes it on to the right side of the paint. Call for the travel. Third travel on the Hillers already. And these officials aren't letting them take a step, that's for sure. <laughs> they are sticking to the rule book. As Molly Terry takes it up. Pass over to the right elbow to Smiley, now to the corner. Back up top, three ball, and it's good. <laughs> 10 to nothing as Ellie Potvin hits from beyond the perimeter, and Coach Greco needs a timeout with 4.52 left in the first quarter. Yeah, yes, he does need that timeout. A 10-0 run here for Notre Dame at the beginning of this game, and a lot of uncharacteristic, almost sloppy play for the Hillers here at the beginning. A lot of they're having a lot of trouble beating the press, getting past half court. Which anytime you have trouble getting past half court, scoring baskets is probably going to be pretty difficult as well. And even when they're not getting press, they're throwing passes down the court. Their players aren't ready. It seems like they're they're hurrying a bit too much right now at the beginning. Well, yeah, I think they have to slow it down a little bit. Don't play at such a rapid pace, and I'm sure that's what Coach Greco is talking about right now. They wanted to come out firing on all cylinders, playing at a rapid pace, but I think after this timeout, you're going to see the Hillers take a much slower approach. And they'll have their work cut out for them, trailing this very good offensive Notre Dame team. You know, the phrase is be quick, but don't hurry. Right. Hopkinton is hurrying right now, and that's what's resulting in these long passes. They're not being patient enough. It's okay to move quick as long as you have a plan, but when you're just trying to be fast for fast sake, that's when you have these turnovers. Well, we've seen some very good things happen after Hiller's timeout, so let's see if that happens here tonight as Morningstar will take it down the middle against the press, takes it in a lane. Great pass to the right block off the glass and in. Michaela Pucci with the first Hillers field goal of the game. That was a great pass down low. And now a three ball from the wing. That's no good. Underneath for the rebound is Pucci. She'll take it down the near side. Bounce pass the Morningstar. She pulls up, launches it. That's going to go rims out. Hillers rebound, however, on the other side. Pass to Goglin into the paint. Attempt to get it over to Pucci off of her fingertips and taken by the defender Splane. Nice job by Splane staying with it. And she'll come up the near side off the pass from Terry. And now heads it back to Terry. Terry in the lane, takes it back out again. Looking in on the interior on the pick and roll, and that is going to be a foul against Notre Dame. A little elbow action there. That's the first foul of the game for Notre Dame Academy. That one called on Helen Wickstrom. Hillers inbound from the far sideline. I'll tell you one thing I love about these playoff games, the PA announcers. <laughs> they announce everything. Yeah, we, we don't miss anything with them helping us out. Certainly. Morningstar down the sideline into the paint, and as she goes in, we're going to have another foul. And it is going to be against the Rebels of Notre Dame Academy. Ivy Goglin on the entry. Pass over to the corner to Pucci, and is taken out of bounds. Players will re-inbound. Goglin to the corner. Pucci up top over to Corby. And now it is back to the corner to Kevani and to the low block up with the shot. It's blocked. 
Kayla Pucci on the attempt. Good low post defense by Notre Dame Academy. And Abby Podvin stepped on the end line right there, out of bounds line, excuse me. Yeah, lucky uh, turnover there for the Hillers. Morningstar on the entry. It's up to Corby. Corby with the crossover, back to Morningstar, driving the lane, kicks to the corner. Now it's back into the interior. Goglin with the shot. That's gonna fall out, and Potvin there for the rebound. Long pass up court by Terry into the paint, and up with the shot, drawing the foul is Allison Smiley. That is on Caveney, and the first free throw is good. Eleven to two, Notre Dame Academy. Tim, I don't know about you, but the Hillers, they've had slow starts before. And they've come back from a lot of them. We'll see if they could do that here tonight. As Canistrari goes down the sideline from the left side, yes! Regan Kevani with the three bucket. I was just about to say they Popkinton was only down nine, but it's still a close game. Mm. And then, as Molly Terry answers with a three of her own, this game is still well within striking distance despite the feel of it. Yeah, it certainly is. These two teams, I think, are going to end up going back and forth. Pass to the corner, nice job keeping it in bounds by Carlson. Kevani thought about it. Another then, travel. Yeah, from she thought about the shot. She probably should have just took it. She did have that open look. Can't hesitate. You just got to take it when you get the ball like that. Blaine back in. Look out for her if she heats up from beyond the perimeter. 14 to 5, 244 in counting, left in the first quarter. Terry up the middle. Pass to the left elbow, bobbled but picked up by Foley. And she'll kick it back out to Terry. Terry up to Splain. Lane back to Terry. Good defense by the Hillers. They're not letting him in the interior, but Terry's going to drive the baseline. Underhand shot over the bucket. It's a Notre Dame rebound. The putback, no good by Smiley, and the Hillers have it. Canistrari up the sideline, into the paint, up with the right hand. Yes! Tough shot there from Canistrari. I did not think that had a chance of falling down, but she got a nice high arc on it, was able to swish it through. And I think she's going to have to strike from the low post tonight. They need her height. Pass into the paint. Good block by Canistrari, and the Hillers will take it back up. And now it's taken back by Notre Dame Academy. Three ball, yes! Molly Terry dials long distance. Molly Terry with an absolutely sensational play. She, she got the steal used her opponent's momentum against her, put it behind her back for her first dribble, took it, took a few more steps, and then spotted up for the three. That was a tremendous play for Molly Terry. Well, I'm officially sold on this Notre Dame Academy team and why they're 21-0. They are a quick striking team with a lot of good shooters. Carlson up the middle. Kicks it in. Now it's back out to Kevani. On top now. Here's Corby back to Carlson, driving into the paint. Nice pass to the left block, but the shot will roll off the rim by Goglin. And there, once again, for another rebound, Molly Terry. Over to Splain. 115 and counting left in the first quarter. Great feed, underhand shot, no good by Terry. Put back is going to draw the foul. Allison Smiley again in the low post. Boxing out the defenders and getting to the basketball. Great movement there from Notre Dame on that possession. Able to find the cutting Smiley. She was able to draw the contact. And with the one-handed free throw, she'll strike on the first attempt. 18-7. Second free throw, got it. Regan Kevani on the entry. Full court press by Notre Dame has been successful so far tonight. Goglin down court, Kevani. 
On the wing, pass Canastrari, driving baseline, up with the shot, off the rim. Rebound and Spillane. Pass up court, less than a minute left, driving in, attempted underhand shot by Terry. And she is going to draw the contact. Tell you, Kivani took a lot of contact on that drive. I couldn't tell if she was inside the circle or not, but she, she got hit really hard on that one. Yeah, she did, and you know, I don't know if Terry drew all that much contact. From here, it looked like all ball. Obviously, the official was right over it with a much better view. First free throw, yes. Terry already nine points tonight. Trying to make it 10, still in the first quarter. She's got it. They need, they need to get, sorry about that, they need to get uh, Morningstar back in this game. She, and there she is, right, as I say it, because really Terry has started to heat up a lot since Morningstar took a break. It's a good call, Coach Haladic. <laughs> Pass over to the near side, Corby. Now to Morningstar. They're really going to need this game offensively. Drives in around, two defenders up with a shot. It was blocked, but a foul called, and I believe it's on Potvin. Looks like Morningstar is going to need to be both the offensive and defensive spark for this Hiller team. A tough task for a freshman. That was a great aggressive play by Morningstar, just getting right in between those tall defenders up with the shot. Draw the contact. In the shooter's roll on that first free throw. Free throws are going to be big in this game, that's for sure, especially if the Hillers want to get back into it. Absolutely. Second free throw for Morningstar, and that is off the front of the rim, therefore the rebound is Terry. Up the sideline, launching the shot, great block by Morningstar. Notre Dame hangs on to it, goes Poppin, picks up the loose ball, and another good block by Canistrari. We'll pass along the perimeter now. Into the interior, to the right block, up with a shot, no good by Smiley. Hillers have it, great turnover, Canistrari near the baseline, she stepped out. That was a great defensive sequence for Hopkinton. A great block by Morningstar in the pull-up three from Terry, and then almost a better block from Canistrari. Too bad Hopkinton, Hopkinton cannot come up with any points in that possession. Yeah, very good defensive stand by the Hillers. Long three towards the buzzer, almost good. The putback is blocked, Hillers have it. Maybe time for a shot, Canistrari. No, is going to be blocked on the attempted pass over to Morningstar at the end of the first quarter. It is Notre Dame Academy 21, the Hillers 8. Tim, a tough first quarter if you're a Hillers fan. And I first want to mention, for those of you just joining us, you are watching the Central Division II semifinals matchup between the Hillers and Notre Dame Academy. Winner goes on to play Medfield, who defeated Groton Dunstable before us tonight. But tough first quarter for the Hillers, uh, Tim. Yes, it was. First, I want to talk about that last shot by Molly Terry. She it looks like she... Uh, went up with it from way out with about five seconds left. Could have been a much better shot. But like you said, it was a tough first quarter for Hopkinton. A, bu a bunch of turnovers, mostly travels. Canastrari was hit with it a few times. Really, Morningstar has been a nice spark plug for this team. But they, they only scored eight points in the first quarter. That's not going to be enough against a team that is undefeated this year and has been through the trials of fire. Right, and this is a team with a very good offense. And to beat a tough Marlboro team in the first round as well, and th that's just impressive to put up 69 points on a very good all-around Marlboro team. And this Notre Dame Academy team has been impressive all season long. And if they win uh, the state championship, it could be the first team in I don't know how many years <laughs> to finish undefeated. But hopefully the Hillers will put a stop to that. Morning start of the corner to start off the second quarter. Canistrari, no off the rim. They'll fall out, Hillers rebound, however. Pass up top, Morning Star driving down, and she is going to lose her dribble. Hillers playing good from the low post. They are getting some good rebounds, but they just simply aren't hitting the shots. As Terry takes it up. 
Pass into the paint, and that is off the hand of her intended target, Allison Smiley. Just underway in the second quarter, 21-8. Notre Dame Academy of Worcester leading the Hillers. Morningstar drives into the interior, bounce pass to the low block, and that went off of, I believe, Gogolin. And yes, it did. That was a good idea for Morningstar. It was the right place to go with the ball. She just kind of did halfway between a bounce pass and a chest pass and kind of short hopped her on that one. Tough, tough ball to recover from. Molly Terry up court now. With the dribble down the left side, up top, the pump fake. Pass over to the right side, three ball, yes. Ellie Potvin for the second time tonight. Strikes from three point range. And this Notre Dame team, they can shoot. And now almost stolen away on the attempted pass, but Morningstar was there for the loose ball. Drives in, pass over to the corner, and taking it into the interior, drawing the foul, Michaela Pucci. Now when Pucci puts her head down and decides to go to the hoop, there's not much that's gonna be able to stop her. She took a nice clothesline almost. Foul there, I thought she was gonna get a continuation on that one, but it looks like they'll throw it in under the hoop. Right, and I think we'll see more of that, rushing the lane by the Sillers offense. That's what they need to do. Morningstar on the entry, great pass the left block, no good on the shot, loose ball on the floor, we got the jump ball. Oh, you have to hit that shot, Tim. <laughs> tough, tough look from Gogol in there. She had an open shot, just could not put enough touch on it to knock it down. Morningstar almost got her hands in there again on the offensive glass, ended up forcing a jump ball. Now Notre Dame and Molly Terry will look to add to this lead. Terry working against Morningstar. Pass up top over to Splane. Splane, now back to Terry. Terry launches it from three-point land. That is going to go off the rim. It is a Rebels rebound. A smiley there, the putback. That's no good. And a Hillers turnover as Morningstar there. A pass to a wide open Lakasha, and she could not follow through. But then on the putback, yes. Michaela Pucci, and one. A tough play there from Lakasha. Again, she had that open layup. Couldn't finish it, but luckily for Hopkinton, Pucci is there to work the offensive boards and again getting that pit bull mentality. She grabs the ball, takes it, goes right back up with it, absorbs the contact. Can't finish the three point play, but still a good play from Pucci. Long pass up court now by Spillane. That's back to Spillane from Winstrom. Spillane working the top of the perimeter. Hands it back to Terry. 5.53 and counting, a 24 to 10 game. Terry on the left wing, surrounded by defenders as Hillers transition to the zone, and we are going to have a foul. That's gonna be on Morningstar. The body bump there, and on the inbound to Wickstrom. To Terry. Down to the corner to Spillane, drives the baseline. Pass too high towards Foley. Notre Dame, they don't take care of the ball the best, but they're shooting so good it kind of makes up for it. Right, if, they, if there's an opportunity for them to catch you off, we've already seen some quick three-point attempts from Molly Terry. If any time they feel that they have a weakness, they're going to, or a second elapse in the defense, they're going to launch, launch up that three. Great feed of Golan on the left block, and she will draw the shooting foul. That's the sixth foul against Notre Dame Academy. Golan no good on the first free throw. Hiller is only one for four from the charity strike tonight. Second attempt for Goblin. And that'll fall out. Loose ball picked up by Smiley. Up the far side, Terry. Up top, 
Three ball, and that is going to bounce right off the iron into the hands of Lakasha. Canistrari drives in from the wing, up from the block, and it is going to be a foul. She was hoping for the and one, but she is heading to the line. Good play from Canistrari. Notice that she had the defender on her hip, and if she put the Jets on, she was going to be able to get to the hoop. She saw that and took it all the way and drew the foul. On the first free throw, yes. At the line for Hopkinson, number 11, Julia Canistrari. 24 to 11, 513 left. Second free throw, got it. Well needed free throws by the Hillers. A three to two quarter in favor of Notre Dame Academy so far. Five minutes and counting left in the first half. Pass over to the elbow to Smiley, now back up top to Terry. Terry pass to Potvin. Potvin drives in and as she does, fouls call. It's gonna be a defensive foul on Sakasha. Hopkinton's only scored four points here in the second quarter. Still only about half, about halfway through, but they're gonna need to start picking up the pace a little bit. Yeah, well actually, uh, Hillers are uh, winning the quarter, four to three <laughs> so far. Pass over to uh, Potvin. Back to the wing to Terry. Terry down the perimeter for three. Bounces up off the iron. Loose ball batted around in the air. And there underneath was Foley. And as Foley tries to take it back out, it is going to be a Notre Dame Academy violation. Hillers on the entry. Good turnover there by the Hillers. Corby, pass down court to Wellzell. Wellzell back to Morningstar, driving the lane. And, and a carry it's, on that one. Yep. Can't have those turnovers, Tim. They've had quite a few of them in this game. Mm -hmm. It's pretty Tur characteristic of them. Right, turnovers that just seem to derail all the momentum that you've had from that turnover that Notre Dame just got. Any defensive stop that you just have is nullified because you haven't had the opportunity to take advantage of it. Terry up top, drives the lane, off the glass, too strong. Pucci is there. Coming down court, Carlson. Carlson will take it past the defender with the underhand shot, no good. And therefore the rebound was Potvin. Pass up court to Terry. Two Potvins on the Notre Dame Academy team, both very good players. Turnaround jumper, that's gonna fall out. Almost got her own rebound. Good job by Allison Smiley, but the Hillers were there. And then a nice effort by Morningstar to put it out of bounds off the defender. Or excuse me, Carlson. That Carlson was falling out of bounds there, knew her only option was to throw it off the Notre Dame player, and she managed to get it done. Great play. Great job staying on your feet for that one. <laughs> she took a hard shot there towards the baseline. Corby down the far side. It's up top to Wellzell. Over to the left block. Up and in. No good. Looked like it was going to go up and in, and then off the hands of Pucci a couple times. Oh, and if you're Michaela Pucci, you got to be saying to yourself, how did that happen? <laughs> when she was trying, after she got that rebound and put it up again, she got whacked pretty hard. I heard the slap even in this loud gym. I was able to hear it. Hopkinton fans not happy, and I'm questioning why there wasn't a fa And there we go. Yep. Pucci drives and draws the contact there. And this Notre Dame Academy team, they're a physical team. They're not afraid of foul. Now Pucci at the line. First shot is good. Substitution for the Hillers. Ivy Govlin back into the game. Rozelle will take a seat. Second free throw, count it. 24 to 14. Hillers slowly working their way back. Terry up the middle, on the pick and roll. Pass to the corner, three ball. Off the iron, no good. Great rebound by Goglin. And now, 
Pucci goes up the sideline. Carlson in control up top. She'll launch a deep two. That is going to go off the iron. A Hiller's rebound by Goglin. Turnaround jumper, yes, and one. Ivy Goglin dominating the low post. Ivy Goglin finally getting involved offensively, able to grab that offensive board, turn around, nice footwork, put up the hook shot, and with the contact, now it has a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. Don't look now, but the Hillers in this quarter, <laughs> leading eight to three. 304 left to go in the first half. 24 to 16, Notre Dame Academy lead. Ivy Goglin on the end one, yes. The traditional three-point play is complete. Substitution for Notre Dame Academy on the inbound. Now in for Notre Dame, number one, Ellie Potvin. Ellie Potvin back into the game. She has five points tonight, or excuse me, eight points tonight. Terry up the far sideline. Passes along the perimeter. Potvin, now it's back to Winstrom. To the corner, Potvin for three, no good from Ellie. And the ball batted around towards the baseline, but Abigail Potvin unable to keep it in. And the Hillers have it. A lot of quick threes for this Notre Dame team. Not necessarily that all of them are bad shots, but a lot of times they move the ball once, twice maybe, and they launch up a quick shot. Full court pressure, good pass from Candestrari right in the arms of Pucci. Driving the lane, off the glass with the left hand, no good. It is a Hiller's rebound by Canistrari, but then pulling it out of her hands was Smiley, and we get a foul call. You figure that would be a jump ball. <laughs> Normally it is, I'm so, usually they're quick to go to the jump ball. But like you said, a foul this time. And now Notre Dame in the bonus. Yeah, a one and one coming here. And fouls against Canistrari. Kathleen Smiley at the line. Notre Dame hasn't scored since early in the second quarter. On the one and one, no good. And they will keep it in their possession. Great rebound by Smiley over the wing. Three ball, yes! Molly Terry dials long distance for the third time tonight. Morning Star. Working against full court pressure over to Corby now down the sideline. Corby driving baseline. Trying to pass up, ripped away by Smiley. Good bounce pass up court into the interior, up and it is an air ball over the hoop by Potvin and then on the rebound attempt, a foul is called. And this is going to be two for the Hillers as they are in the double bonus. Kayla Pucci to the line. Feel a little momentum shift, Tim? Yes, you can definitely sense it. Obviously, score notwithstanding, just Hopkinton seems to be getting the more the better end of these plat, the last few 50-50 balls and the play overall in general. Well, first free throw is good. Well, just remember how slow they started off in the first half against Ashland. They got outscored the first quarter 16 to nine and came storming back. Second free throw, good. 27 to 19. 159 and counting left. Notre Dame Academy has not scored a field goal for a while. Terry drives in, great pass into the paint, off the glass, it falls out. A miss, open opportunity by Kathleen Smiley. Pass down court, driving in from the wing. Pucci at the low block, surrounded by defenders, ball on the ground, a battle for it, and finally the jump ball call comes. There's the quick jump ball call that we're so used to. Goglin saved that one. She got in there and got the hands on it for that jump ball call. And she will inbound. Goglin on the entry over to the left corner up to Corby. Corby to Canistrari, thought about it. Now she's gonna launch the three and that is going to go off the rim and back out. Therefore the rebound was Wickstrom. Up court is Terry. Terry working against Morningstar. Terry, pump fakes, pass over to Potvin. And now over to the right corner. 13 left on the shot clock, and there we go. Abigail Potvin dials long distance. 
30 to 19. Corby towards the sideline, stolen away. Up and no good, and then knocked out of bounds. Hiller's basketball, what a quick-handed steal by Molly Terry. And right there, Hopkins, all the work Hopkinton did here in the second quarter is almost undone with that quick three and almost giving up a, a layup on that steal. Three three buckets is Notre Dame scoring in this second quarter. Morningstar up the middle, 48 seconds and counting left to go in the half. On the wing, Notre Dame working a 3-2 zone, Corby up top. Now to Canistrari, driving into the paint, up with the shot, draws the foul. Nice job by Canistrari rushing the lane. Canistrari bailed out the Hillers right there. Offense looked very stagnant, not many people moving at all. Canistrari took it upon herself to get in the lane and get something going for her team. And she, now she's shooting free throws. First free throw, yes. No matter what, this has been a very well played quarter by the Hillers. Second free throw, got it. I'm telling you, it is going to come down to free throws in some way. Terry up the middle against Morningstar, 26 seconds and counting left in the half. Up the sideline now. Pass across, Poppin thought about it, drives in, loses control, and now ball loose on the ground and it is covered up. We're gonna have a jump ball. Nice rush by Morningstar to cover that one up. It is going to be a Rebels inbound. Kathleen Smiley on the entry. That was a great play by Morningstar to dive on the floor and grab that ball. Honestly, that one, I know they're quick to call these jump balls, but I thought even with that tendency that she got to that ball first and was maybe going to draw a foul, no such luck for the Hillers there. She's really becoming quite an all-around player. Block shot by Canastrari on the Wickstrom attempt, and now the Hillers take it back up. And now Canastrari falls wide open, break to the bucket, up and in goes Molly Terry. And that is going to do it for the first half. After one half of play, it is Notre Dame Academy 32, the Hopkinton Hillers 21. Hillers outscore Notre Dame 13 to 11 in that second quarter. And just to reflect back to the Ashland game, it was a 16 to nine first quarter in favor of Ashland, and then 11 to nine in favor of Hopkinton in the second. <laughs> so maybe a similar situation here tonight, Tim. Maybe, I, I don't want to talk bad about Ashland, but clearly superior competition here against Notre Dame, undefeated, and you can tell Molly Terry has really impressed me so far here in the first half. Taking a few questionable shots, but she definitely has the ability to knock down any shot that she decides to take. Well, the Hillers are certainly going to have to step up their defense a little bit in the second half, because this Notre Dame Academy team can shoot. Still a long way left to go. Certainly, do not change the channel. You are listening to the Central Division II semifinals. Notre Dame Academy leading Hopkinton 32 to 21 at halftime. Welcome back to Clark University. Tom Nappy, Tim Halatic. You are listening to the Central Division II girls semifinals matchup between Notre Dame Academy and Hopkinton. And of course, watching. Sorry, I got a little confused uh, with the radio <laughs> side there. I've been doing a some basketball on the radio lately, of course, so uh, first TV game of the year, so a little rusty. <laughs> it's all right, we forgive you. <laughs> As we enter the second half, it is Notre Dame Academy 32, Hopkinton 21, Hillers have their work cut out for them in this half. Let's take a look at first half scoring. We will start off with the Hillers, who, by the way, went 10 for 13 from the charity strike. Pretty impressive, and they're gonna need those free throws going down the stretch. Julia Canisari with six, Lily Morningstar, with uh, one, Michaela Pucci with eight, Regan Cavani with three, and Ivy Goglin with three. And for Notre Dame Academy, Elizabeth Potvin with eight, Molly Terry with 15, Abigail Potvin with three, Anne Blaine with three, and Allison Smiley with three as the Hillers inbound to start off the second half. And they are moving right to left across your television. On the entry to Canistrari, drives in, pass over the short corner as Morningstar loses her handle on it, and Notre Dame has the turnover. Terry will take it up and 15 first half points and 
She actually did that in the first round for Notre Dame Academy as she totaled 22 points in the victory against Marlboro. Great feed inside, up with the shot, rolls around the rim, falls out. And a loose ball on the ground. It is picked up by Terry. And a pass underneath to Smiley. Goes up for the shot, great block. In the low post by Goglin. And Smiley to the line. It was a great block, but they're going to get her with the foul. I, you know, I don't know if there was contact there, Tim. I want a replay of that. <laughs> That's right, this is TV, so we should have replays. And the first free throw is good. Cameraman Mike Terosian giving me a look. <laughs> Second free throw attempt is going to fall out. Goblin there for the rebound. Pass over to Lakasha, and now down court over to the Right wing to Pucci, around the defender as she goes up, draws the contact. Awkward shot for Pucci there, almost looks like she was backwards by the end of it. Good job though, forcing the contact now at the line. Again, like you said, 10 for 13 from the line in the first half, that is impressive. But without those 10 free throws, they would only have 11 points. That is not a good sign. They need to get, I mean, it's a good sign that they're drawing all these fouls and getting to the line, but they need to do a better job of scoring overall. Pucci hit the first one. She's now five for six, make it six for seven as she hits the second. A 10-point lead for the Rebels of Notre Dame Academy. Terry working down against Morningstar. Terry along the sideline in the corner. Pass up towards the elbow, dribbling off her foot is Allison Smiley. It'll be a Hillers inbound. Canistrari on the entry. Full court pressure, and it's been paying off quite a bit for the Rebels. They're forcing a lot of turnovers with the press. Akasha over to Morningstar, and now that is up to Golan. Great pass over to the right block. Off the glass and in, Michaela Pucci. Great passing on that possession for the Hillers. Every pass with purpose and force. They knew exactly what they were doing on that one. Terry on the wing, kicks it up. Over to Potvin, now back to the left wing as we'll pass it around the exterior. Terry up top, shot clock at 10 and counting. Driving in, Potvin takes it over to the short corner and then we're gonna get a wrap up in the interior between Smiley and Goglin for the jump ball. Looks like Notre Dame is making a concerted effort to involve Smiley early on here in, this, in the beginning of the third quarter. Past few possessions, they've gone straight to her. Great steal by Morningstar. Wide open break, up with the shot. No good, no foul called. It is a Hiller's rebound. Lacasia's is there, up to Canistrari, driving in. And it is going to be a moving violation. I believe that's Canistrari's third or fourth travel violation already in this game. And that's very uncharacteristic of her. You don't see that too often from Canistrari. But she also doesn't go into the low post as much as she is tonight. Smiley up to Terry, but they need her there because they need some height up there. Three ball up top, no good. And loose ball is going to be pulled down by Potvin, who will put it back up and in. What a job by Ellie Potvin. It looked like she ripped it right out of the defender's hands. Now a steal, a quick break by Terry. Wide open to the bucket, up and in. Hillers, they need to be more quick running the floor in that situation. Morningstar takes it into the lane, trying to get some revenge. She won't get the shot, but she'll get the foul. Morningstar heading to the line, and she's been relatively quiet tonight offensively. The lone free throw early in the first quarter. She's always, she's always been a defensive stalwart for this Hiller team. Offensively, she's been coming around more in these past few games, but defensively, she's been there the entire year. I'm gonna go back to the Ashland game, though. She had uh, eight fourth quarter points. So she was huge in that game. But she does tend to shine a lot in the fourth quarters in clutch situations. 5.29 and counting, left to go in the third. 37-27 as Morningstar was perfect for her last stand at the charity strike. Terry, pass over to the left side, wide open three and she hits. 
And Spillane with her second bucket from three-point land this game. Up the far side, Goglin driving in. Up from the block, no good. And it is knocked out over to Molly Terry. Long pass down court, a beauty of a pass. But then knocked out of the hands of Wickstrom by Canastrari. It is a Rebels inbound. That was a great pass down court. That was almost like a football a pass. Terrific pass. Molly Terry's been doing whatever she wants offensively, guiding her teammates here early in the third quarter. Ellie Potvin up top over to Terry. And now an attempt to get it back to Ellie Potvin. Pass a little too high. Hillers have the turnover. Megan Kivani and Callie Corby back into the game. And number 32, Megan Kaveny. Kaveny over to Morningstar. Full court press once again. Attempt to get it over to Corby, nearly stolen away, but Morningstar there for the loose ball. Long pass up court over to Kaveny. Three ball, yes! Huge shot from Kaveny right there. 40 to 30, Hillers back within 10. 4.33 and counting as Terry takes it up for the Rebels. Pass across. Potvin thought about it, now goes back up the perimeter to Terry. To the wing, Potvin into the paint. They'll kick it back up over to Wickstrom. Wickstrom, pass over into the interior. Smiley back up top now to Terry. Long three, no good at the shot clock buzzer. Great man-to-man -man defense by the Hillers. Hillers are gonna need a lot more of that here to try to come back from this 10 point deficit. Morningstar along the far side, behind the back dribble to get past the defender. Takes it right in the lane, a ball tipped out of her hands and taken, quick break by Terry. Up with the hook shot, no good, the put back, no good. But Ellie Potvin who came up with a very impressive steal will draw the foul and head to the line. That was a great job, just poking that ball out and running away with it. Again, Hopkinton hurrying, it looks like, on offense. A few possessions ago, Ivy Goglin took the ball and ran right down to the post, shot it, did not really even gauge the situation, just kind of threw it up. And again, Morningstar trying to force the issue going against multiple defenders. They're going to need to get better quality shots against this talented Rebel team. She hits one of two, it's an 11 point game. The press back on for the Rebels. Corby working her way up court. Up the sideline, takes it in to the corner now to Caveney. Into the paint, up with the right hand, no good. Right off the glass into the hands of Ellie Potvin. And Terry takes it down. Pass to the left corner, into the interior, the kick out, three ball, yes! Ellie Potvin. Starting to rack up the points. 14 on the night. Up the middle, Canistrari into the paint. And as she goes in, we are going to get a whistle and a foul call. It is going to be against Wickstrom. Third of the game. Caveney on the entry. Canistrari on the corner. Three ball, and that is an air ball. I think Wickstrom might have got a piece of that. Passes down to Wickstrom, bounce off of her. She's able to regather, hands it back to Potvin. Drives in, pass to the right block around the defender, and drawing the foul, Allison Smiley. Smiley with four points on the night, all off of free throws. Four for six from the charity strike. First free throw off the front of the rim, no good. Momentum really starting to shift over to Notre Dame's side. You can feel it whenever they get the ball. It seems like their fans are expecting them to score. And why would they not, being led by Molly Terry? Second free throw off the rim. Still plenty of time, however. Press back on, Morningstar across to Corby. Corby, working the right side. Hands it back to Pucci, and Pucci loses her dribble, driving to the paint, Poppin has it, and quickly down court is Terry around the defender, up and in, and the and one.
Terry just maneuvering around the defenders, drawing up the contact. And she has been borderline unstoppable in this game. With that, we will get a timeout. 2.43 left to go in the third quarter. It's Notre Dame Academy 46, the Hopkinton Hillers 30. Tim, what do the Hillers need to do to get back into this game? Well, once again, Molly Terry answering the call right there. Her team needs a play. She comes up with the loose ball, goes, draws a foul, and one. I, I mean, you just gotta, there's not much you can do against a player who's as, playing as well as Terry is. You just have to try to minimize the damage that she can do. You have to be up in her face at all times, not let her have anything easy, because we've seen her rise up from the three-point range. If she starts getting confident from there, then this could, this could turn into a blowout very quickly. I think they're gonna have to start, so in addition to what they're gonna have to do defensively, offensively, they're gonna have to be a lot more sound than they have been. Quick place, team, they're not quite ready to start running. They throw the ball down the court, results in turnovers, there's travels. They re they're trying to play. It almost seems like they're trying to change their game in response to this huge crowd, and that's not the team that they are. They've been, They've played, they've won 15 games this year, being a hard-nosed, tough team, and they're kind of driving away from that here in this game. Terry completes the and one, 47 to 30. And you know what? I think maybe you just gotta put two on Terry at this <laughs> rate. And they've been doing that a lot, but she's just so quick. Corby up the sideline, we'll take it back out. It's the Rebels transition from zone. Kevani underneath, off the glass, no good by Goldwyn. You have to hit that shot. Wide open look under the bucket. Finally a good shot opportunity for Hopkinton. Goldwyn just could not finish it down low. Hiller's inbound as it was off the Rebel. Pass to the corner, now it is up to Corby. Corby leaves it back for Carlson. Carlson in the interior, hands it back to Kevani at the buzzer, no good. There for the rebound, Ellie Potvin. Long pass down court by Terry, and it is over the head of their intended target, Allison Smiley, but off the hand of Golan. Rebels inbound. Ellie Potvin on the entry. For those of you just joining us, we're at Clark University. It is. The girls Central Division II semifinals matchup. Winner of this game goes on to play Medfield in the Central Championship to represent the Central in the Final Four. Three ball from the corner, no good by Potvin. And it is going to be taken by Gogolin. Pass up court to Canistrari. And she was looking for Carlson, who was on a break to the bucket, but overthrew her. And the Rebels get the ball back. Miscommunication there. Canistrari thought Carlson was going to leak out toward the corner. Carlson ended up diving toward the basket, and so the ball looked like it was fast to no one there. Molly Terry takes it down. And they are going to start taking it down court pretty slow without the press, and the Hillers laying off the press because it hasn't had much success. An attempt did pass, was tipped by Hiller, but into the hands of Terry, as the Rebels maintain control. Passes along the perimeter, shot clock getting low. Attempted pass in the interior, no one's there, Golan. Comes up with the loose ball. Corby now along the sideline. Pump fake by Kaveny. And now a great feed to the low block. And Goglin going to draw the contact. I get what people might not notice about that possession. Elise Carlson had the ball about half court. She received a pass. Hawkinton looked like they were about to start rush, rushing again once more when there wasn't a clear opportunity for them to score. Carlson took it, slowed it down, ended up finding a good shot for Goglin down low. First free throw, no good. That's great awareness. That's what you have to do to avoid turnovers, which was a big problem, especially in that first quarter. Goglin on her second free throw attempt. Count it. Banks it. 47-31, 116 left in the third quarter. Molly Terry coming down the near side, working against Lily Morningstar. Terry up top, looking in on the interior. Pass over to Potvin, Abigail Potvin, driving in. 
Pass to her sister Ellie. Now back to Abigail. Attempted pass off the hands, but controlled by the Rebels. And now a steal by Morningstar. Now she comes up, draws a foul. It's going to be it's Molly Terry. That's what you should do. Try to get Molly Terry in foul trouble if you can. <laughs> Take her out some way. Megan Kivani on the entry. 50.9 seconds left in the third quarter. Akashia calls it out. Pump fakes over to Kanishari on the wing. Good pass underneath, turn around, no good by Golan. Ball knocked out of bounds, went off of a Rebel. Killers on the entry. Avery looking up top, good coverage over to Golan in the paint, the kick out to Morningstar, she drives in past two defenders, underhand shot off the glass and in. Lily Morningstar making it happen. Fantastic drive and play overall by Morningstar. Able to dive right through the defense and hit the reverse layup. Molly Terry down for it. Little push there, no call. Pass to the corner. Kenestari had a hand on it, but the pass accepted. Three ball, no good. And the Hillers have the rebound. Goblin was there. Kevani launches a deep three. That's going to go off the backboards, no good. And now Potvin will pass down court. Three ball too late. And at the end of Quarter number three, it is Notre Dame Academy 47 and the Hopkinton Hillers 33. Well, the Hillers, Tim, they started to get some momentum towards the end of that quarter, but the scoring for Notre Dame just has not stopped as they outscore the Hillers in the quarter, 15 to 12. Molly Terry has been the main culprit of that. She has been outstanding, really, this entire game, really picked it up in the third quarter, started hitting threes, took much more of a facilitator role for her team, found open players, cutting on fast breaks, just within the, within the half court offense, she has really been awesome here in this game. And I mean, if unless coach decides to uh, sit her down in the fourth quarter, I don't know Hopkinton's gonna have a pretty difficult time coming back from this deficit. Well, if there's one thing we know about Coach Greco, it's that he's pretty good at making changes when they have these uh, quarter breaks. So perhaps they'll make a little change here. It's still very much a game, but the Hillers cannot let the Rebels have too much offense in this quarter for certain. It seems like Hopkinton's offense has been at its best when it is being led by Lily Morningstar. We saw that great acrobatic layup near the end of the third quarter. Let's see if they put the ball in her hands in the fourth quarter. We'll have to wait and see. Hiller's working right to left across your screen. Morningstar up top. Driving the lane, up with the shot, yes! There she goes, making me look good there. <laughs> Lily Morningstar has come through at key moments this season and they are going to need her in this quarter. Molly Terry drives down, passes along the perimeter, driving into the paint, out of the corner, wide open look, three ball, no good. And it is going to be a jump ball call as Kathleen Smiley had the rebound off the missed and Spillane free ball and then got wrapped up with a hiller. Rebels on the entry. Smiley on the entry. Long pass up court to Terry. Terry long three, yes! Wow, is that NBA range, Tim? It might have been, that was a deep three from Terry. Up the far sideline, Canistrari into the paint, turn around, off the iron, no good. A rebound underneath by Smiley. The Rebels will take it back up. You see the Hillers laying off the zone, they're concentrating on that low post. They don't want to give the Rebels easy buckets. Terry on the wing, three ball, off the boards and no good. And it was then knocked out of bounds. Went off of Smiley. Killers on the entry. Morning star. Over to Lacasia. Full court pressure. Morning star along the sideline, takes it in. Bounce pass attempt stolen away by Potvin. 
6.34 and counting left in the game. Terry will take it down slowly against Morningstar. Terry into the corner, driving baseline. She stepped out. Or we have a foul. Looked like she stepped out there too, Tim, but fortunately it for the Rebels, they draw the foul. Perhaps a little push there to get her out of bounds. Smiley on the entry. That is up top to Terry. Terry along the wing, picks it across. Attempted pass inside, loose ball picked up by Potvin up top. Terry, and he's trying to get it back to Potvin, knocked away by Lakashia, and then Lakashia is going to slam down, trying to get to the loose basketball. And that was definitely a foul on Notre Dame. Lakashi was knocked down to the ground pretty hard. Definitely an elbow in her back, nothing called. She took it strong though and is back up playing. Terry up top, three ball off the iron, no good. And the ball batted around and then knocked out of bounds by Potvin as she tried to get it away from Canistrari. 50 to 35, 5.42 left to go. Notre Dame Academy leading the Hillers in the girls Central Division II semifinals matchup. Michaela Pucci up the middle, into the paint, up and no good. Rebound by Potvin. Quick break by Terry, takes it into the paint, off the glass and in. She just makes it look easy. Press back on for the Rebels. Pucci up the sideline. In the corner, good feed of Morningstar. Along the low block, looking towards the exterior and a bounce pass to the driving Kayavani who will draw the foul. She will go to the line for two. Oh, smiley. And nope, they're going to change it now. She'll inbound. I thought it was up during the shot. Yeah, it looked like it. Avani over to Canistrari. And Canistrari will pull up and launch it for two. 5.05 and counting. A 15 point lead for the Rebels. Like you said, senior guard Molly Terry fully aware of the situation, taking as much time as she can, getting the best shot for her team. Terry to Potvin, now back to Terry. Terry surrounded by defenders, and the loose ball picked up by Kayavani Morningstar on a quick break around the defender, but she is going to draw the contact. Great play from Morningstar, able to catch her defender off guard, try to do a Euro step. Defender couldn't get out of the way and was hit with the block. Yeah, it was a really good look by uh, Morningstar. Morningstar has been good from the free throw line all year long, and there's the broadcaster's jinx. <laughs> Second free throw coming for Lily Morningstar. And it is good. 435 and counting, a 14 point lead now for the Rebels. Abigail Potvin along the far side, surrounded by defenders, attempted pass up top to Ellie Potvin, stolen away, quick break to the bucket, off the glass and in, Michaela Pucci. Just what Hoggerton needs right now, great play from Pucci to take the steal and go all the way. And then she comes up with another one. Yeah, long pass oh. down court and Pucci was trying to get a hold of it but could not contain it in bounds. She is a fun player to watch. Tough physical, running the floor really well. When she puts her head down, when she gets her mind set on something, there's not much that's going to be able to stop Pucci from getting it done. And that's for certain. On the entry, Ellie Potvin into the paint, and it was briefly knocked away, but Potvin picks it up. 
A kick out back to Abigail Potvin. Drives in around two defenders. Underhand shot, no good. And loose ball is going to be contained by Spillane. She'll get wrapped up with Canastrari, and we got a jump ball. Miller's on the entry. Morningstar to Corby. There's one thing we know, Tim. Hillers are not going down without a fight. That is certain. This team has a lot of fight and grit to them. Coach Greco wouldn't have it any other way. Corby feeds Pucci, drives in, up with the shot, and no good. Pull down by Smiley. Coming down the near side, Terry. That's up top. Thought about the three. We'll kick it over to the left side. Rebels trying to waste time. And now a long two up top. No good by Spillane. Therefore, the rebound is Golan. Coming up court, Corby. Up the middle, bounce pass is a little bit too far to Pucci's left. Tough turnover right there. And we are going to get a timeout. Three minutes, 21 seconds left in the game, or in regulation at least. Notre Dame Academy leading 52 to 40, but Tim, it's a 12 point deficit, there's still time. There is still time, and with the play of Michaela Pucci and Lily Morningstar, there's always a chance for Hopkinton to come back. However, if Molly Terry's able to hit one or two more big threes, that might put this game out of reach for Hopkinton. Most certainly, and they have been uh, protecting the perimeter, I think, a lot better in this quarter, not letting the Rebels get those open looks. And that's why they uh, really haven't hit a whole lot of threes in this quarter. In fact, they haven't hit a whole lot in this quarter. They only have five points, right. but this has been a very defensive quarter because the Hillers, they only have seven. So right. no one's really taken advantage of this, but this has been probably the most tough physical quarter of the game. I think so. You have players falling all over the court. Lakashia took a spill over by the out-of-bounds line, and Morningstar has been on the floor basically the entire night trying to scrap for her team. It has been very physical, and I imagine the last three minutes will follow the first few here in the fourth quarter. Strap in your seatbelts. Should be exciting. Terry. Winstrom back to Terry. We'll take it down against Morningstar. Pass up top, back to Wickstrom. Now over to Ellie Potvin. Bounce pass to Terry around the defenders. Up with the underhand, no good. It is a Rebels rebound by put back. Yes, Allison Smiley, and one. Fifty-four to forty. Goglin's third. Off the front of the rim, Killers have it. Up the far side, the top now, Kenestrari pulls up and launches a three, no good. Put back, going to draw the foul, Goglin. Good low post play once again. Tough shot there, looked like the three was gonna fall down for Kenestrari. Good. Good work by Goglin to not give up on the play, grab that offensive board and draw the foul. Goglin at the line. Allison Smiley coming out of the game. And Getting a nice ovation. Yeah, she's had a great game. Good game defensively. Hillers need these free throws. Here's number one. Number two, yes. 54-42. Terry along the far side, trying to pass ball, was tipped by Goglin and Pucci, and then we're gonna have a whistle, and it is going to be a turnover. Good defensive stand. Terry working against the press to a court for the Hillers. It's down the sideline and some big bumps there. No call. Pucci steals it away. 
That's up top to Lacasia. Now back to Pucci. Into the paint, loses her handle, but picks it back up. Up with the shot. Great block by Smiley. Terry is going to take it. 214 and counting. Hillers need to think about fouling soon. Pass over to the left corner. Splain hands it back to Terry. I'm surprised the Hillers aren't fouling yet, Tim. Three ball, no good by Potvin. Picked up by Lacasia. Lacasia over to Canastrari, driving in with the underhand shot, going to draw the contact. I imagine, to your point, Tom, I imagine Hopkinton will start fouling soon. Perhaps they wanted to try to go those last few as late as they could without giving away any points. But that was a great drive by Canastrari, able to knife through the defense and draw the contact. And so far, she is five for five from the free throw line. Nine points overall on the night, and make it 10. Well needed free throws, 10 point game. Terry, surrounded by defenders, bounce pass to Splain. Looks back to Terry. Launches it down court over to Potvin. Potvin back up now to Splain. Now Terry, they're going to waste clock. Potvin into the interior, pass to the wing. And now back up top, Terry. And play. Morning look Star. at that, Morningstar is able to poke it out, steals it away, quick break, up with the shot, it is blocked by Terry, and then the loose ball covered up by Morningstar, there was a push, and that is against the Rebels. Great job by Morningstar. Let's not forget, we still get to see Lily Morningstar for another three years. Mm -hmm. And we are going to have a timeout, a 10 point game, 119 left, you got Morningstar going to the line. If she hits this, it cuts it down to eight. This game's not over, Tim. No, it's not. With over a minute left, Hopkinton still has enough time to, like you said, get back in this game and potentially even win it. They're going to have to start fouling though. That last possession, I thought they were going to start, then as the clock dwindled down to 15 and 10 seconds, obviously they decided they were gonna play out that last possession. But I imagine soon, after the result of these free throws, they will be fouled. Yeah, I think they wanted to uh, make the Rebels work for it, and they ended up with the turnover. So clearly it wasn't a plan that backfired. But they are going to need a whole lot more turnovers here in the next minute or so to get back into this game. Both teams will come back out, and this has just been a fun game to watch. These two teams have really played hard out there tonight. It's been a great atmosphere. The Groton Dunstable and Medfield game was a great atmosphere. Every play that was made, their team's respective fans cheering loud. Same thing here. It's been a great atmosphere. Morningstar hits on the first. This is to cut it down to eight. Got it. Freshman with two huge free throws. 54-46 Rebels. Terry down the far side, and as she comes down, we have a foul. Pucci a bit too aggressive on that one. Uh, might have been intentional seeing the clock. Tester at the line. Molly Terry is Three for three from the line tonight. And she hits the front end of a one and one. Second free throw attempt for Terry. Off the iron, no good. Therefore the rebound was Pucci. And they are going to say Morningstar stepped out of bounds, coming up the sideline. That is rough. That is a momentum killer for sure. Wickstrom on the inbound. Expect the Hillers foul any moment. Potvin takes it across and there's the foul. It's on Lakasha. And the Hillers letting a precious few seconds tick off the clock there, not fouling immediately as that ball was passed in. 
Abby Potvin at the line, her first time tonight. Three points overall. First free throw, good. They hit on the front end of the one and one. Second free throw, yes. 57-46, and now we get a Rebels timeout. They'll talk things over. 106 left to go, Tim, and anything's possible, but it's starting to look a little uh, like slim hopes for the Hillers. The writing here. is on the wall for certain for this Hiller team. They have fought hard in this game to try to come back, but really, in the end, Molly Terry was just too much for them to overcome. I, again, game not over, still things could happen, but with a 10 point deficit at this point and presumably they're gonna try to get Terry the ball as much as they can so she can be the one shooting free throws. Even if she goes the rest of the way hitting one of two, that might be enough to seal this game. 25 points for Molly Terry tonight. That is just impressive. She had 22 points in the victory against Marlboro in the first round. And she's really the key offensive weapon on this Rebels team. And they have a uh, number of good shooters, but Molly Terry is quite a fun player to watch. She's just so quick to get into the interior and shoot the three ball. She's really the complete player. Hillers will work up court quickly and more than likely try to launch a three. Driving in, Lakasha. We'll shoot along too. Yes, there you go. Takashi found herself wide open, was looking to pass it off for a three, like you were mentioning. Realized that nobody was guarding her and took the shot, and knocked it down. And then you get the timeout by the Hillers to talk things over. It's now a nine point game. So you're three possessions away, really, right. at, the, at the most, or at the least. But, um, it's, you're gonna need to force a turnover here. Mm -hmm. Obviously you're gonna try to foul, but if they, uh, if they hit the free throw, that could be it. You, you can't, you're in a tough position when you're banking on the other team missing free throws. They're called free throws for a reason. And again, like when you're banking on that, it's tough that you're gonna need some turnovers, like you said. Um, if they could get a turnover here and hit a quick three, then the, game, the um, feel of this game changes dramatically. Hillers have outscored the Rebels in this quarter, 15 to 10. On the entry is Molly Terry to the corner and there's the foul. And again, they get it in the hands of Terry. She will be the one shooting the, the big free throws. And that is definitely who you would want at the line if you're the Rebels. Sakasha is fourth. Terry is three for three so far. Going to try to add on to her 25 points tonight. Front end of a one and one, yes. On the back end and got it. 27 points for Molly Terry and another timeout by the Rebels. 53 seconds left, 59 to 48. Hillers need threes. Yes, they do. They need threes and turnovers and nothing else. They can't have any buckets or any points really at all scored here by Notre Dame, which is a tough, tough spot to put your defense or team in. You're giving the ball to Canastrari here. She's been relatively quiet tonight from outside the perimeter, but uh, probably the best three-point shooter on the team. I would think so. She consistently throughout the year, she has been the best three-point shooter, but I, if they get an open shot from someone else, I, I would take it. I, I wouldn't abandon a good shot to try to get it to Canastrari. Canastrari with uh, 10 points tonight. Six of them came from the line. Hillers set to inbound. 53 seconds left. Here's Akasha. Up top. On the elbow, looking towards the corner. No one's open. Pass tipped up top, but handled by Morningstar. Drives in and loses it. Out of bounds. Rebels ball. 
tough, tough possession. It looked like the Hillers weren't sure if they wanted to go for a three or not. Morningstar ended up driving, got the ball poked away. Maybe I'm imagining this, but did I see a defender's hand touch the ball before it rolled out? I can't I say, know. honestly, I don't know. It was a defender's hand, very close to that basketball. Pass to the corner, 37 seconds left, there's the foul. This time it'll be Ann Spillane. Yeah, Terry's not able to get the ball, her hands on the ball on that one, so Hopkinton averts her shooting, shooting the free throws. Spillane with six points tonight, has not been to the line yet. On the first one, no good. Both teams in the double bonus. In for Hopkins at number 33, Allison Maffioni. It's playing on the second. Off the front of the bucket, a rebound by Markedon. Up the middle, Carlson. Pass over to the right side, drive into the bucket, up with the shot, no good. And it is controlled by Potvin. And it doesn't look like the Hillers are gonna foul here. They can't seem to get to him, 15 seconds, and that's gonna do it. Notre Dame Academy is going to advance. We will get a late foul. Put the backups in, get them yep. one last look this year. But a uh, tremendous season by the Hopkinton Hillers. What a job Coach Greco did in his first year with the team. Absolutely. And I know Hiller fans might not want to hear it right now, but the future absolutely looks bright for this team. Only four seniors on the team this year. They're going to be returning Ivy Goglin, Julia Canastari, Pucci. Um, Morningstar will have a year under her belt. I think next year this Hopkinton team is going to be very difficult to deal with. I think so too. I'm looking forward to uh, another three years with Lily Morningstar as long as mm -hmm. she stays healthy, which of course we hope she does. And here we go, one second, zero, and congratulations Notre Dame Academy. They are heading to the Central Division II Championship game to take on Medfield as they knock down the Hopkinton Hillers 61 to 48. A tough loss to swallow if you're the Hillers, but you can't do nothing but congratulate Coach Greco and the Hopkinton Hillers on an amazing season. They really did have a great season. They were in almost every game that they played. They obviously in a tough TVL division this year were near the top of that division. And while we're at it, I want to give a shout out to Molly Terry. She had a great performance tonight. Um, obviously the entire team, Notre Dame, is talented. One player doesn't get you to 22-0. But Molly Terry was sensational tonight. I think that they're really, um, Morningstar had her hands full with her the entire game. And for her to limit her to what she did, I think Morningstar had a great game. But Molly Terry was, Molly Terry was really terrific tonight. She certainly was. 29 points overall for Molly Terry. What a performance. She's clearly the player of the game. Once again, congratulations to the Hopkinton Hillers on a great season. Congratulations to Notre Dame Academy on advancing. Should be a great finals between them and Medfield. Well, that is going to wrap up a season of Hopkinton Hillers basketball here on HCAM. We'd like to thank you for joining us here at Clark University. For Mike Terosian on camera, my broadcast partner, Tim Halatic. I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching HCAM. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody.